We are preparing future leaders, giant killers, who will leave this place and impact the world. I was having a conversation with our youth uh, children's director, Daphne Brown. Where's she at, Daphne? She's, give God praise for Lady Daphne Brown. Minister Daphne Brown and all this is her work. And I was sharing with them, it's important that we teach our children to become acquainted. There she is. Give God praise for her. It is important that we prepare our children and get them acquainted and familiar with the presence of the Lord and allowing God to work and operate through them. And this is happening in real time, right? We don't want to relegate them in the corner somewhere. With that in mind, our children's ministry is not a glorified babysitting service. We are teaching them to hear the voice of the Lord, to stir up the gift of God in them and allow God to use them. And we don't just do this in lip service. We do this in action. We bring them over here and let them serve and teach and sing because we're getting them to exercise their gifts. And so with that in mind, I want to uh, present to you one of the emerging voices in our church in the person of Sister Madison Ransom. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's going to be coming to briefly share with you from the word of God. And I want everybody, if you got legs, to jump up on your feet and receive Madison Ransom at this time as she comes and share. Y'all ain't standing. I said, I want everybody on your feet. In Jesus' name, give it up. chance to speak today for you Sunday. And to everyone here, thank you for your prayers and support. This morning, my message title is Crisis Averted. If you would please open your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7 and Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 and 7, both of which will be in the NIV translation. If you would please stand with me for the reading of the word. 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, Cast all of your anxieties on him, for he cares for you. And Philippians 4, 6 and 7 reads, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Jesus Christ. Let's pray real quick. Dear God, I ask you help us to understand the words that I'm speaking to them today, that it'll reach somebody who needs it. We thank you for getting everybody here safely and that you'll take everyone home safely after the word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Have you ever experienced a crisis? I know I have. The dictionary defines a crisis as a time of intense difficulty. In other words, a crisis can be simply defined as an age limit, nope, as an instant or unplanned struggle. Guys, there's no age limit to when it comes to having a moment of crisis. A crisis is often kept alive by our anxiety. And anxiety doesn't make the situations better or worse, but it makes them feel worse. As children, making bad grades or not performing as well as we think we should can lead to anxiety. For adults, things like losing a job, a divorce, or money, money issues or relocating can cause anxiety. Both adults and children deal with anxieties around death, inadequacy, feeling overwhelmed, or being faced with challenges that are seemingly too hard to handle. Regardless of who we are, we all deal with crisis moments. When we feel lost or things seem out of control, we shouldn't move away from God, but rather move towards him. Guys, anxiety can make us feel as if God has become distant, and this just is not the case. The Bible that we know and love promises us that God will never forsake us. We can avoid our crisis moments by trusting in God. Putting the crisis in God's hands is literally the best way to deal with the anxieties and struggles of that moment. 
Our first scripture tells us to cast all our anxiety on him. Our second invites us to be not anxious about anything. I want to tell you guys three ways that will help you avert a crisis through the lens of these two scriptures. These three ways are simply casting, caring, and communicating. Our first way is casting. 1 Peter 5 and 7 tells us to cast all our anxieties on him. While studying this passage, I found that the church was facing their own struggles. So Peter encourages them to give their anxieties, difficulties, and problems to God. One of the key words in this scripture is the verb cast, which means to forcefully throw something. The scripture says to cast us doesn't mean just something in the present. It means something we can repeatedly do. Sure, we can give God one problem, but because God is still God, trusted with one problem, we can trust him with them all. So we don't have to limit what we give to God. God can handle each of our problems each time a situation comes our way. When I was in strength and conditioning class, we were required to lift weights. While I was doing so, I realized there is someone else important in the process. As the weightlifter is important, there's someone else too. As the weightlifter is training, they're assigned a spotter. The spotter's responsibility is to watch over the weightlifter. And when that said lifter faces a weight that is too heavy, the spotter who is standing right over the lifter helps the lifter with what they cannot handle. Is this not like our God? God is always watching over us. And when life is too heavy for us, life is never too heavy for him. God is ready, willing, and able to carry what is too heavy for us. We can give God our tears, our hurts, our trials, and our discomforts because he can handle it all. This is how we cast. The second way is caring. If we ever wonder how we can cast our anxiety on God, Peter gives us the reason why we can. The reason is simple. God cares for us. Allow me to confirm God's love for you. Yes, he cares for you and I. Again, the church is in the midst of difficult days. Early believers of Jesus Christ were seen as a threat to previously established religious systems and an easy target for harassment and persecution. The question must have come up at some point in your life. Does God really care? The disciples were asked the same question when they were threatened with the terrible windstorm in Mark chapter 4. In the face of our anxieties and crisis moments, we are all faced with the difficult question. Does God care? Does God care about what I am going through, dealing with, suffering from, or how I feel about who I am? Our passage answers these questions. Yes, he does. If the casting can continue, then the caring equally continues. If we continue to cast, God will continue to show that God cares. God cares for us regardless of our circumstances. He cares for us in our good days, in our not-so-good days, in our laughter, as well as our sorrow, when we are sick, when we celebrate healing, and we feel as if we are on top of the world, and when we feel like as we are in the lowest valley. The message is clear. God will continue to care for us. Now, not only can we see a crisis averted in casting and caring, but also in communicating. Paul's words about not being anxious to the Philippian church sings in harmony with Peter's casting of anxiety. For Peter, he tells the church to give the anxiety to God. Paul tells the church to not be anxious, but pray about everything. A sure way to give our anxiety to God is by communicating. In in other words, we should come to God about our situations instead of searching for other ways around him. Prayer allows us to communicate with God and vice versa. No, we should not only talk to God when there is a crisis, but it is a very good thing to talk to him in moments of anxiety. Paul says to this church to not allow anxiety to get the best of them. The word here for anxiety is means to be torn in multiple directions. Anxiety can cause us to feel torn about which way to turn or which way to go. Paul's suggestion for dealing with anxiety is by communicating. Don't be torn, but center yourself by prayer. When we pray, we can ask God for whatever we need and want. 
When we talk to God, God can keep us from feeling as if we are torn and the world is falling apart. As a result of our praying, Paul gives us the hope of what prayer can do. In school, we learn about synonyms and antonyms. Antonym means the opposite, so the opposite of anxiety is peace. Paul says don't be anxious about anything, but pray about everything. As a result of the prayer, God will give us peace. In other words, when we pray, God can turn a situation of anxiety to the total opposite and give us peace in an anxious situation. To put it all together, Peter tells us to cast all our anxieties, our issues, our struggles, our problems, and put it on God because he cares for us. Paul tells us don't worry about it, but instead pray about it. Both of these men want us to know that in our times of crisis, God is the way out. God and his word, no, he is the light at the end of the tunnel, though. But God and his word is the way to have your crisis averted. God bless you all. Come on, y'all can do way better than that. Put your hands together for Minister Madison Ransom. Come on, y'all can do better than that, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Make some noise, raise this roof. Looking at our next generation of preachers right among us. Yeah, we got somebody to pass the baton to. Come on, somebody. We got somebody, I'm feeling good about leaving that church into the hands of young people who can take the word and go forward. Come on, somebody. Give God praise one more time for her. The devil ain't got everybody. You hear me? The devil ain't got everybody. God still got a remnant in the house. He got a ram in the bush. I wish I had some parents in here who are speaking the word over your kids that they will stand in the house. So y'all ain't helping me in here. Where my parents at? You ought to be shouting me down. Where my grandparents at? You ought to be shouting me down. If you encourage them, you ain't got to show up at the jail and pick them up. If you encourage them, you ain't got to run around the streets and try to find out who they're sleeping with and what they're doing. If you encourage them, you ain't got to try to get a crack needle out their arm. If you encourage them, you ain't got to worry about where they at. Somebody give God praise for what God is doing in the midst of our church. Y'all think we're playing over here. <laughs>